So earlier this week, the NTSB report came out on the Francis Scott Key, uh, Francis Scott Key bridge collapse, uh, the Dolly container ship that ran into it. And already the news is being a little bit rocky with it, but I just want to highlight a couple things about the report. And I'll put a link to this report in the description. Actually, it's a really good one to read, but the news is making it out that a single wire improperly installed made this incident happen. And really, the single wire caused a chain of events that caused this accident. Now, here's a good example of the news, really, their headlines leading us astray. Because it says a misplaced wire label caused a power outage on a massive container ship, sending it crashing into a bridge. Well, kind of, but that's not really what the report says. And there's a couple documents that really do show this well, and I will put these uh, a link to these in the description. But first of all, this is a spring cage terminal block, and here's a ferrule, and then here is a heat shrink wire. And so this should slide down into here and get a firm contact point on this. Now, what they're saying has happened, and I've seen this in many panels, it is easy to accidentally do, is somebody slid that wire label over top of that ferrule, which makes it too large to go down into here and we only end up grabbing a small little piece of it so a couple of the recommendations and really there is some great info here about you know the thinking about the what if of your system because i've talked about before you know i look at a lot of your checkoff list as far as approving control systems and machines i almost never see the basic uh, question of what happens when the power fails. Now, there was a lot more to this than just the power failing. It's well worth a read. But kind of going back to the whole discussion about when do we need redundancy, this, this is probably going to be a good case study in the future. But the first one they're recommending is a warning about, you know, placing a wire label wrong. Well, okay, I get that. But that not necessarily going to would have helped in this situation. I can't really say one way or the other. But B here, the benefits of infrared imaging as part of preventative maintenance program for routine monitoring of electrical components to detect inadequate signal wire connections. Now that's really interesting that they, they say signal wire connections because I think most of us, even if we're shooting, doing, or shooting, when I say shooting, that actually is using a thermal camera, not actually shooting a panel, but if we're doing a thermal image of our control panels, we're usually looking at our motor loads. We're looking to see that a motor's failing, things like that. So they are recommending control circuits here, and I've set up a little demonstration of this, just so we can kind of talk this out and give us something to think about. This is a similar terminal block. This is actually a push connect. It isn't a spring cage. But so if we actually look at the diameter of this terminal block, compared to an insulated ferrule, then that insulated ferrule for a 14-gauge wire, which is the size wire they were using, and actually this is the exact same diameter, I think, then it just fits. It's a nice glide fit. What that means is if you accidentally put a ferrule too far, you can see I even tried to shove this one in, if I can get that to focus on it, then it won't fully go in. And so that's what they're saying happened here. Now, just to talk about that light connection, what I've done is I've cut all but one strand out of this wire, just to kind of simulate that barely connected situation. And then I've taken a heat gun that, what is that, 1,200 watts? What did you say it was? 1,500 watts. So a fairly good load on a single strand of wire. And then we're just gonna use the fluke I see here. Michael, I may need you to hold that. I try to pull all this off. Yep, and so I'm going to hit the record button just in case we drop everything or we see something exciting. And then I'm going to hit the record, and then Michael's going to turn it on. And so what they're saying is if we have been shooting this control, we could have seen this one wire heating up. So you see the wire on the left is clearly heating up compared to the wire on the right. And that is the benefit of a thermal imaging on your panels. Now overall, if you're actually looking at acceptable levels of heat, this isn't bad. We're only at 100 degrees Fahrenheit on that wire. 
But compared to the rest of what we're seeing, there's a big temperature difference. So here's where, you know, just highlighting the fluke I see a little bit, here's where, well, you can't see that, I'll point, flip it over to the other side as soon as I get this out of my hand. But here's where a thermal imaging camera that actually shows the contrast of the heat can be really good because it's only 105 degrees. And we're starting to approach where it's gonna be really bad, but there is a clear issue with the left wire compared to the right wire. So yeah, th this is the fluke I see. Uh, and you know, and here's where I think everybody should have one of these. If you're, if you're working on a panel or building one, you definitely should have something like this. Now for professional camera shooting, probably something like this fluke 279 FC would be better because this one has all the reporting. But for, for getting a quick shot on something, this this would have helped maybe. So Michael wanted to play with that one, so we'll go ahead and do that one. You wanna go ahead and bring it in? And so on this one, in fact you can still you can still see the heat there. I don't know why I'm blowing the heat gun on my laptop. That's really smart. Yeah, so that would have clearly shown it. And mainly now you could hit that capture yellow button there. And then we could use the Fluke Connect app and we could actually make a report about this issue.